it's Jesse from Jesse Marie Does Stuff here on Floss Tube, and I am here on this Wednesday, January the 10th, 2018, with my next update video. So, woohoo, we made it on a Wednesday, but it's only been like, what, five days since I last saw you? So, you can expect this one to be really quick. Sorry slash yay. <laughs> I never know how to feel about that. The quick ones go up easier, and they're a heck of a lot easier to edit, but, um... I know that some of you guys like the long ones, but as always, when I have a short video, it usually means that there might be a longer video coming shortly uh, to sort of make up for the time difference. And so that is the case this week as well. I told you guys that I was going to film my Year of Whips video on Monday, and um, that didn't happen, obviously. Um, so... I am going to film that today and either upload it today or tomorrow. I'm not quite sure yet, um, but so there is that. So you will have two videos from me this week, which is, you know, makes up for the short, short video. Okay, so let's talk about what I'm here to talk about today, and you will see pretty quickly why this is going to be a quick video. First things first is that I totally forgot to go back and look at comments on my last videos to see if I had any questions. And so I'm just going to save that for next week. I expect that this short video thing is going to be a common theme moving forward. And that's just because my rotation is so very simplified, uh, which works out really nicely for me. So I'll just save the questions for next week and we'll make that one a little bit longer. I have uh, just two projects to show you. One that I have worked on, another that I'm currently working on. And then that will sort of help us lead into plans a little bit. I want your guys' help with my plans because I am conflicted, and you'll see that here in a second. Uh, I have not received anything in the mail that I know of. There might be Fabrics of the Month in my mailbox, but I haven't gone to check it. And I also haven't read a single page of a book since last time, so I don't have any reads, Lily reads, or otherwise. Um, and then knitting, I've worked on one of my two projects for the month of January, and so I'll, I'll have that to show you. But that's it. That's really it. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. Full disclosure, it's been, it's been winter outside, um, and it's been unseasonably cold. And as a result, I am dried out <laughs> uh, my skin and my throat, and so I'll be referring to my water here uh, today. Because even though this is a short video, I, like I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to handle it. Um, I am drinking out of my, um, well, this was Danny's for forever, but um, this is a Frank Beamer cup, Coach Frank Beamer, um, and this is celebrating his 25th season in 2011. Um, and uh, let's see. <laughs> What does uh, Coach Frank Beamer and uh, Michigan football legend Charles Woodson have in common? There's two things. The first of which is that uh, they are both inductees into the 2018 class of College Football Hall of Fame. Um, and the second is that they have both, in their respective eras and respective teams, have both gone into Columbus and beat Ohio State um, while they were at home. So, just, you know, random college football facts for you after the end of the college football season. Anyway, let's get on with the cross stitch. So let's talk about works in progress and what I worked on uh, since we last spoke. So last Friday when I filmed, it was the beginning of my first weekend rotation for... Uh, Heaven and Earth Designs. And so this weekend I was working on Snow Castle, artwork by Randall Spangler, and all of the snowflake needle minders here. And I was working on this for the Full Coverage Fanatics group, um, the monthly sal. So I have decided to break up the different sals into the weekends. And so this past weekend in particular for me was the monthly sal. So there is that. And you'll be seeing a preview here of what this looked like the last you saw it. Uh, and what I'm going to show you isn't like, it's not like extraordinary 
Like it's not much of a development of the picture yet, but I did, I had a really good stitching weekend. So uh, my fabric here is 25 count Easy Count Lugana by Zweigart, which really dangerous to me, um, and Stitch from Stash more importantly, one, two, three stitch now carries this fabric. Um, so that is, that's a little scary for me because I'm, I'm addicted to this. But anyway, um, so here, oh, catching the light again. There we go. So I'm really pleased with the progress that I made on this this weekend. Um, all things considered, this was a lot. Um, I was not feeling well. I hardly stitched it all on Friday after filming and getting the thing uploaded, and then Danny and I decided to play a board game. Uh, for those board game friends out there, we were playing uh, Terraforming Mars, uh, which is on loan from his brother. We've played it twice now. That first game, he killed me. <laughs> and the second game, I beat him, so woo um, And so we're going to play it a third time for a tiebreaker and then move on and try something else. Anyway, uh, sorry for that rabbit trail. The... Long story short is that on Saturday I was sick, so I didn't stitch much on Saturday. I also wasn't able to go to the Stitchy Meetup in Fairfax, which was a super big bummer. Um, I really hate missing that, and um, so yeah. But then Sunday was like my big stitching day where I just I played catch up and got got my goal. So my goal was two thousand stitches, and I met it barely just barely under the wire, um, but I made it. So catching that light, that's really great because you can see the trees and you can see that those splotches of white, like they're not just floating in free space. Down here we're getting into some of the lighter blues into um, 820 as opposed to 823. So it's, it's paler and yeah, just really enjoying it. So there's that. So I've got what, 4,000 stitches done? Am I at the halfway mark? I must be. If I got 2,000 done this weekend and I had 1,800 before, it's 3,800. That's not quite halfway. It's so close to halfway. So there was that. Then on Monday, um, normally this week would be reserved for Lady of the Flag by Mirabilia, but because that's a Year of Whips piece and Year of Whips doesn't start till the 18th, I decided to table all of my Year of Whips projects until after the 18th. And so I decided to random number generator pull two projects to fit in this week as well as next week. And so as I mentioned last time, for this week it pulled Birthstone Dragon Sal by Ingleside Imaginarium. So you'll be seeing a preview here of what this will look like finished as well as what it looked like the last time I showed it to you. Basically I had the first six dragons done, uh, so through June according to the stitch along. And, um, did I say this was by Ingleside Imaginarium? Which is Brittany, whose Guardians of Notre Dame Sal is looking phenomenal. Super jealous of everybody doing that. Um, but as, as I said, I want to do this one first. And then we'll, we'll see about any other cells. So, <laughs> I made some pretty good progress. Uh, Bulldog Neominder here from Elena and Olivia. And then Toothless because, because toothless. So, uh, yeah, um, I s mentioned last time that my goal for the month was to finish the July dragon and then start on the August dragon. And I did that on Monday. Like I started and finished the July dragon in one day and then started August just barely on Monday. Um, so that's, that's kind of crazy, uh, but I'm, I'm not complaining. So let me grab my phone core here so that, there we go. So you can see what's going on. So I have most of, uh, August done and July is all the way done, uh, his jewel and everything. And according to the pattern, July is pretty different than charted. So obviously these jewels are my embellishments um, and for the original version they are stitched. And um, so for this one it's charted with a little heart. 
sort of like in the crook of his tail there. Um, but it was too big of space for me to try to finagle getting this gemstone in there. And so I just kind of hung it off of his claws and he's sniffing it. So then I had to make the decision of what the heck to do with that space. And so I, very amateurly, I mean, I didn't pay attention to any sort of shading. I just sort of guessed. I made it a straight line right there at his behind and called it a day. Um, and it's, it's good enough. It's not great. I would have liked to pay attention to some sort of shading, but at that point I was just... I was ready to be done with it. I was. I didn't want to stress about it. I didn't want to have to rip out a bunch of times to make sure the coloring was right. Um, I just wanted it simplified as best I could. So that's what I did. I'm running into the same thing here with Peridot because the way that Peridot is charted, uh, his jewel is sort of definitely like almost in the hand of his tail. It's kind of what it looks like because it's it, his tail is feathered. Um, and so it's almost like it's resting there, like, on what you would consider the wrist or so, uh, for the tail. And so I have to reimagine that as well. I've already changed up his body a little bit, um, because the gemstone on the chart sort of cut into the body a little bit because it sits right here. And it's a pretty big charted gemstone. So I've already made the changes there. And then I just have to figure out how to either set the gemstone there or find another placement for it. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm digging how it's looking. This one is taking me a lot longer to stitch than this one did. Um, this one is pretty big blocks of color and this one is like, it's a little bit more, I don't want to say fiddly, it's not really the right word for it, but it's just smaller bits of color. And um, so that is presenting its own sort of slowdowns. So there's that. Um, I have had ideas, so I'm not going to try to pronounce the keyword that this dragon is based on. Um, it's based on an Aztec legend, and I'm going to insert it here um, because I don't want to. I don't want to mispronounce it. Um, but based on some of the research that I've done for it, it's. I mean, it's got very Aztec colors, very vibrant colors, at least in modern renditions, not traditional renditions. Um, and so bright, vibrant greens and vibrant golds and vibrant reds and blues. Um, and so I have, I have found some beads that are, um, they're really gorgeous. And so I am contemplating sort of repeating what I did up here with emerald. So emerald, it looks like those beads are almost like a chain around his neck. And so I think I may repeat that here with, uh, with Peridot and, but make it a really long one so that when he's flying, it dangles really, really far down. I don't know if it'll work like this, but my thought process is that I'll string the beads on a very long section, a whole bunch of beads, on a very long section of thread um, and I'll probably use like black or something like that and then try to couch it so that it has like a curve connecting to the jewel resting on his tail um, I don't know how that's gonna work I have to play around with it a little bit I'm not trying to rip out a whole bunch of time so I'm <laughs> kind of hoping that it just works on the first try um, so I guess I'll let you know um, but I haven't ordered those beads, but I will, I'll do that today and, um, they'll be here pretty quickly. So, so there is that. Uh, my fabric, by the way, is 32 Count Belfast in Sparkling Diamonds by Crafty Kitten Fabrics. That's it. That's all I've worked on, but it's only been five days since my last video. So not really all that surprising. So let's go ahead and switch over to plans. Obviously, I'm going to work on Birthstone Dragons through Thursday. Then Friday is my next Heaven and Earth Design weekend. This weekend is the quarterly seasonal sal for me. Um, and the quarterly seasonal is winter. And so I'll be working on Snow Castle by Randall Spangler and Heaven and Earth Designs. Where I hope to get another 2,000 stitches done this weekend. 
I'm aiming for a page finish this month. So I've got to, I've got to crack on. So another 2,000 stitches this weekend, I'm hoping. We'll see what happens. I'm not going to be heartbroken if I don't reach that goal, but it's nonetheless, it's a goal. Uh, not to mention, I'm already in the negative for Stitch From Stash, and so I need to generate some credits. Yeah, thanks, Trisha. Anyway, um, and then on Monday, here's where you guys are going to come in. I'm conflicted. I'm not going to lie. I'm conflicted. So, Monday, according to my original plan, I was to pull out Prairie School or Alphabet. And uh, no name needle minder here. It says I like big books and I cannot lie. And so, uh, real quick, let me show this to you. Uh, I'm working this on 40 count platinum Newcastle linen by Zweigart. Did I guess that right? Yes, I did. And I am doing nine letters per panel, I guess. And so my plan was to tackle A is for anchor and to see if I could finish that block next week. Uh, so I have quite a ways to go. I still get a kick out of the fact that it just says rum. Anyway, so there's that. However, so with how things went with this, I finished start started and finished July in a day. I think that by the end of this week I could have September done. I might not have the beads yet for August. Um, to be able to finish it tomorrow, no, I definitely won't have the beads tomorrow. But I think that I could potentially get both August and September done between today and tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm taking a stitchy day uh, because um, things are about to amp up a little bit in the Storyteller Collection next week. Details to follow. Um, but So tomorrow I'm taking a stitchy day. I think that I could get them both done tomorrow. We'll see. Um, so that leaves me with three. It leaves me with three and a border. So my contemplation is this. I could work on this next week. Potentially get the block done, and there's a little bit of stitch from stash credit for finishing that, that block. Um, I haven't... I need to talk to Stephanie from Stitch from Stash, um, who was Miss Oso oh Crafty. Um, I need to talk to her about how to credit each of these because I would like to credit each of them. Um, so I have to work that out. Or option number two is try to finish this next week. I don't know. I don't know about the feasibility of that because, and by finish this I mean finish the whole thing. I, again, I don't know about the feasibility of it because if business is going to pick up next week, which I expect it may, um, on top of the fact that I have about half of the border still left to do and I have to finalize my plans for the beads in this section, so I guess I will order those too. Um, I'm not sure about the feasibility of getting three dragons plus all of that border done next week. But it's possible. On top of the fact that after my Lady of the Flag, flag Week, um, I could go back to this and, and put in those last few stitches. So essentially, I could make this my focus for the month to get this done this month, which is really attractive. Both of these options are really attractive to me. I'm actually really excited to work on this, on top of the fact that you guys know one of my goals for the year is to work on every single one of my whips, at least a little bit. So if I did that, then this is just another one that's done. But a big finish would be cool, too. Uh, talk about starting the year off on the right foot, getting a finish pretty quickly. Um, the caveat to it is that it's not a year of whips piece, and so it's kind of a bummer that my first finish of the year would be, I mean, not a bummer, that's not the right word, um, but it's just kind of an the antithesis of my plan for the year, because my first finish will be a non, a non year of whips piece, but that's not a huge big deal. Um, I'm not too, too caught up about that. So this is where you guys come in. I would like you to vote Prairie School or Alphabet or Birthstone Dragon Cell. Which one should I work on? Because I'm indecisive. I can't pick. Um, and so 
tell me what you guys think. Leave, leave it in the comments below, um, and you have until Sunday to, to answer. Um, let me know what you think, uh, which one I should work on next week. Uh, this will be starting on Monday, so. Decisions, decisions. Hard to say. Okay, our last conversation for today is knitting. And so I have my bulldog bag here. And in my bulldog bag by Zoe Designs Limited on Etsy, I don't know if she's still in business, I bought this years ago, is my, uh, in this project bag, is my sock. And so it's a little bit richer than that. It's not so bright, but that's okay. Uh, this is Sweet Georgia Tough Love Sock in the West Wind colorway. And you guys, I did it. Check it out. There's a heel. It's hard to see. There. So here's the cuff of the sock. I knit the leg. I knit a pretty long leg. I did a total of seven inches from um, cuff to when I started the heel. Um, and I took votes on Instagram for which heel I should do because everybody's telling me that I should do the fish lips kiss because once you understand it, it's so much simpler than uh, the heel flap and gusset. So I took votes on Instagram for what people thought I should do and the overwhelming majority was heel flap and gusset. Um, and that worked out well for me because it has been this, this bug in my ear to try to get that accomplished and so I went with that. I thought that was really great. Plus Ann P uh, messaged me and she was like, you should do that because otherwise you have to read through the heel for the fish lips kiss heel and figure all that out. And I was like, Okay, so I did it. I had success. Um, the problem that I had last time is that the pattern that I was following made it very difficult to understand how to pick up stitches um, after knitting the, the heel turn. So basically what you do is you knit this flap and you can see that mine is, um, it is a slip stitch rib heel flap uh, for the extra fabric because this is where socks can be um, the most vulnerable for holes and tearing and, and whatnot. Um, because socks, they're like shawls, you know, they just drape. They're not really, there's not a whole lot of wear that go into socks, or excuse me, to shawls. But socks, because you're putting it on your foot and you're putting it in your shoe, there's a lot of abrasiveness going on there. Um, and so the heel is a weak spot. So I did a slip stitch rib heel flap uh, for the extra fabric because those slip stitches add an extra layer of fabric on the back. Um, and then I knit the heel turn and I followed a different pattern for how to pick up stitches and it was like a breeze. It went so well. I was so impressed. But I'm not going to lie, I was stressed the whole time I was doing it. I don't pick up stitches very well, which is why I am not a sweater knitter yet. Um, it's why I don't knit much in the way of sweaters. The sweater that I did knit was uh, top-down, raglan increases, um, cardigan and so there was no picking up stitches whatsoever um, because I'm just not very good at it so but this um, this pattern that I followed it was it was great it was really simple and here I am now knitting the uh, the gusset decreases so now I've got too many stitches here and so I need to decrease down to the same amount that I had here for the leg so that I can knit the foot and then the toe I was really hoping to have um, this one done, but I underestimated severely <laughs> the amount of time that it would take to knit the, uh, the gusset decreases. It's a lot of knitting going on here. Um, and the decreases are slow, which is good because the faster the decrease, the, the more vulnerable this part of the, of the sock is, but um, it just takes a little while. So, that is a uh, uh, progress keeper for where I was last time. And so I've done a good little bit of knitting on this. I'm so excited, you guys. I'm knitting a sock. And I tried it on once um, when I got the leg. I think when I had the leg to about here. And I really like the, um, 
the 2x2 two two cuff. Um, I contemplated doing that in the foot because I like it when socks sort of like hold on to your foot a little bit. But um, I think I'm just going to do a stockinette one. I'm going to keep it simple. Um, and we'll make those adjustments later on. I don't know how this is going to fit, how the heel is going to fit, and I won't know that really until, it, until the whole thing is done. Um, socks knit cuff down are harder to try on than toe up. Um, at least that's my understanding of it. So there we have it. My sock is in progress. Um, I haven't touched my Rochambeau cowl and I need to do that because it's the 10th already and time is ticking away. So I need to get back on that. Back on that. So I think that once I finish, let me talk knitting plans real quick. Um, once I finish this sock, I'm going to immediately cast on the second. Um, and I'm not going to push myself necessarily to try to finish the pair in January, but if it comes naturally, then I may just go for it and try to finish the pair in January. But I'm not going to be like freaking out trying to get it done. Um, because ultimately I would like 12 pair of socks. That would be great if I could knit a pair of socks each month. That would be fabulous. Um, there is also an Eat Sleep Knit badge this year that is very attractive to the idea of knitting 12 pair of socks. So we'll just kind of see what happens. Like I said, I'm not going to push myself too hard, um, but there is that. So next week I will report back with what I get done on each of these respective projects. And that's it, y'all. That's everything. <laughs> I told you it was going to be a quick one. Um, it's a little bit longer than I expected, actually, but that's that's good. So I am going to head off here. I'm going to edit this and get it uploading so that I can film my Year of Whips plans. Um, and so I will see you in that video. Everybody take care. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your continued support of me and my channel. If you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comments. Um, and I will see you next time. As always, y'all, be kind.